Okay, so what is nothingness? So what is your interest in nothingness? What, what, uh... when it, first of all, I would like to ask, is, it, is there an absolute nothingness where time and space does not exist? So you are asking in a scientific way, scientific in way, a yes. physics, uh, in physics point of view. Um, okay, I'm glad you asked that because this is one of my main yeah. interests of research, uh, this concept. But to be really exact in physics, you would use more the word vacuum. A vacuum, you know, rather than nothing. And personally, when I use the word nothing, I like to use the word no dash thing, meaning there are no particles, you, you know, there is no matter, you know, but there is still energy. So, in my understanding of cosmology, uh, the way I relate to nothing is simply that if you remove let's say from a box, from a container, all kind of matter, huh? all kind of forces, gravitation, electromagnetism, so forth, and you have a, va a vacuum, life will arise from that vacuum. Life will arise. There will be what is called uh, virtual particles, you know, uh, like electrons, photons, will suddenly so when, you, when, you, when you mean life, you mean the particles, particles not actual life. Yes. No, not actual life, you and me, but let's say the precursors of life, uh, which are uh, particles. And so, uh, what one makes one think is that basically when you get rid of everything in the universe, let's say the day that the universe stretches, stretches, expands, and then tears itself apart and kind of disappears, information and energy will always remain okay so it is a where place, they remain? Uh, everywhere you see everywhere. once once the space you say rifts when the, when the once the universe expands and it rifts off and there's breakages in the space not just in the space in space time continuum right? yes, yes. What would be in that spaces? Yeah. Would there be still particles in there, or no. would be no space-time there? No, it will be or will no space-time. Space time? Uh, everything you said is correct, you know, uh, because the idea is that this universe, I mean, when it started, it started from virtual particles just coming out of this vacuum and then creating a wave that expanded. Yeah. So. The space is uh, the, that quantum field, okay, that is the lowest energy, the quantum, quantum vacuum. let's call it that, the quantum vacuum, uh, you know, that in itself has no space and time, it's infinite. But then that's not you know, really empty, is it? You know, no, because it depends what you mean. You see, you have to look at it scientifically, and scientifically, we would say it's empty in the sense that it is a vacuum, is empty in the sense that there are no particles, okay? But there is still that uh, original essence, which was always there and will always remain there. But if you say in an, in an absolute vacuum, in a quantum vacuum, particles exist. No, can exist, yeah, can, can come out exist. of it, yes. But you say there's no space-time in a quantum vacuum. Yes. So how can particles exist without space-time continuum? No, particles then create space-time. Space -time. You see? So it's like in a lake, look at, at an infinite lake, just imagine an infinite lake, and within this lake, suddenly little fishes boop, boop, come up, come down, and they create a concentric wave, which is a new space and time. That would be another universe. Exactly, exactly. You got it to a T. <laughs> Uh, I, think, I think that's pretty much it, but there's so, so, so much more to be learned about uh, You see, th this is putting it, this is putting five years in five minutes, what we have done. Uh, because you have to study, you have to understand just a little bit about quantum energy or, you know, or a quantum field, uh, the effects of virtual particles and, uh, and so forth, and then our little perturbances 
uh, per perturbances, it's called quantum field theory, within this uh, quantum field creates particles. And you can really see how life emerges from a vacuum, okay? But we have to be careful. It's good you ask me the question in a scientific way because then it's easy for me to answer. Because if you were asking in a philosophical way, you know, oh, how can nothing create like this? Then it becomes speculative, you know. So the absolute nothing, perhaps, that you mentioned, that does not exist, okay, in, rea in reality. But I would not say absolute nothing. I would say a vacuum or a no-thing state. And this thing is infinite. But within infinity, you can have as well space and time. So each time in a, in a quantum vacuum, when a particle is made or is okay, I'll created, I'll yeah. you can't say created. Yeah. Yeah. Or self-created. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Once that particle is, comes into existence, yeah. will it be a Big Bang? Oh, but that's what he's saying. Absolutely. Saying Not every time. If we look a little bit, such an interesting question. That's beautiful, you know, uh, you're getting it really good. If we think of this quantum field, eternal infinite, my uh, uh, the idea about it is that there is a multitude of these concentric waves coming out. Some of them just coming and going and disappearing very quick, but some of them creating a big bang. The you, you know. collapse. Yeah, because what happens, the way I see it, and we have to just talk conceptually and in an easy way, when you have a particle that goes up and then it falls down, it creates space-time uh, below, uh, above, below, when it falls down, it creates like a vortex of energy, a black hole, you know, and from this black hole, a big bang emerges, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very, very true. you know, so a universe comes about. Well, you say when a particle moves down, there's, basically there's no up There is down, no right? up and down, but there is this movement. Oh, no, this no. movement, if he comes, let's say, down, yeah. 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 and makes a black hole. Yes. But when he goes up, then it should make a black hole? Uh, no, when it goes up, what happens, then there are these ripples, you know, because it has created a, rip a perturbation within a particular field. Okay, this nice little uh, peaceful lake, you know, a little fish comes out, comes up, goes up and down, and it creates a wave, a perturbation. This perturbation is the beginning of a new universe. Okay, but what I fail to understand is, yeah. when, once a particle is created, and you say it moves in two directions, one direction when it moves in one direction, it would create a black hole, black hole, which would eventually give birth to the universe. And when it goes in other direction, which is no different than this direction, eventually. Yes. Yeah. And he would not create a black hole there. Yeah. Oh, you mean going down and going up? Yes. And then it would create two black holes. Uh, I'll uh, I'll think about it because that part, that particular part. From um, the Big Bang, uh, just one second after the Big Bang, everything is very clear, or less, far less than a second. But that blank moment, you know, where the uh, Big Bang just began, you know, just came out, it is a little bit hypothetical still, you know. Uh, but let's say that this perturbation, let's maybe not use above and below just for a uh, conceptual way, yeah. Let's say that this perturbation, creates a kind of black hole and a very strong gravitational pull, you know, which then creates this. So when, when we are talking about nothingness or vacuum, then we have a vacuum of black holes, right? Uh, no, let's inside black hole? Yeah, no, not inside the black hole. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a vacuum, a vacuum field, in which uh, black holes could occur because of the fluctuations of these virtual particles. You know, this movement, this perturbation can create this expansion and so forth. So we have a very, uh, now, this bit that I'm telling you about the vacuum is still an hypothesis. It's not a verified, and it's one of the different hypotheses. But to me, it's the most elegant, you know, and the most beautiful. And there is plenty of evidence to point in that direction, you see. But after that, 
all the faces of the Big Bang, we are very clear. You know, I can spend hours telling you how we verify those faces. Uh, but all these faces then to the creation of galaxies, the Earth, the creation of life, we got a very good picture. Now we are just staying awake at night, working out what happened before the Big Bang. Nice talking to you. It was my pleasure.